Microsoft might be experimenting with a few dark patterns or psychological experiments, perhaps. We're not quite sure. But there's an interesting story that was recently covered, and then they responded to that story. So let's go ahead and chat about what's going on here. Welcome back to Switch to Linux, where we like to talk about free and open source software. And today we're going to be talking about using a free and open source document suite rather than relying on this Microsoft stuff. But uh, let's go ahead and chat about this story. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And our story is going to start over with B-Bomb here. Uh, I've never heard of this group here, but uh, maybe some of you have. And uh, they just released a story. They updated it uh, as of yesterday after a response from Microsoft. But Microsoft, what they had showed is that uh, there was a free ad-supported version of Office they said here no one noticed and it looks as though just to give you the the update up front microsoft says yeah they've been experimenting with this but they don't have a plan specifically to roll it out so it's like a b testing and when i read this i was thinking about the video uh, lewis rossman did recently i think it was a thermostat like a smart thermostat where you get the thing and you have an app and they pushed out this dark pattern just to see if people would be willing to pay money to keep the app working. This is kind of a similar thing. You get a new computer because, of course, a number of people on Windows 10 are going to be forced to buy a new computer, even though their computer already works. So switch to Linux Mint instead of buying a new system. And when they get in there and uh, there's the Microsoft Office there, uh, which is like the quote unquote trial type thing where you used to go in and you click this. You have like 30 days to enter a subscription key or it stops working. Well, now if you hit the skip for now on the registration you are getting, according to Bebom here, at least some people, we're getting a free ad-supported version of Microsoft Office that was limited in functionality, to be sure. So this does look like they were doing A-B or regional testing or something like this. Of course, to save any of your documents, you couldn't save them locally. You had to have some form of Microsoft account because it would only save the documents inside of your, your Microsoft account. And this is where uh, groups uh, like Windows Central and uh, PC World, we they looked at this and they could not get in and get this free system going, presumably because they had Office 365 in their Microsoft accounts. So if you happen to be out there with a Microsoft account without having a subscription to Office 365, it's possible that might be the trigger that would get you into here. And that might be somebody that's on Windows 10 who has purchased Microsoft Office in the past. So now having a new computer, now they need to either you know rebuy or get the subscription model, which is what Microsoft would prefer to do. And so that's probably what would trigger you seeing this, at least if they are still running their A-B testing. So what they say here is they're, they're in short, they introduce the free ad supported version. It brings you Word, Excel, and PowerPoint without any subscription, but it is uh, it is it has an obtrusive ads over it and it does not allow you to save any of the documents and several of the features are locked. So um, this is actually a picture of this. So you can see over here the, the giant ad in the sidebar over here. And uh, but other, it otherwise works for opening documents, creating basic documents, doing the basic things. Obviously, none of the new AI features that they're trying to cram down function and some of the other features don't function as well. They say you can't save files locally when you go to save. Uh, the only option that you have is OneDrive. You cannot save them anywhere else. So, you know, pushing you into that Microsoft Office account still, of course. And I think that they're testing this to see who has the Office account, uh, the Office 365 account, and who does not. And uh, they walk through exactly what they did here. In their instance, they they download uh, download the desktop version. Then once it's downloaded, run it, let the download, let it download the whole suite of apps. Now open any Office app. For example, they launch Word. And under the dialog here, 
sign up and get started. Like, sign in. No, we're to this point. They said here they download the desktop version. And you still need to sign into your Microsoft account to use this. Is this how bad Word has gotten? I don't know, folks. I have not used Microsoft Word in a better part of a decade. And I write books and do formatting and teach this kind of stuff. Have a look at my channel, Writing Done Right, for my work on, on writing and using open source apps for that. I mean... Is it's foreign to me? If if I download the like like just the standalone version, do I have to sign in to use these functions? I don't know the answer to that, folks, because I don't live in the Windows world. I have not drank. I have not been been seeped. I have not been marinated in the Kool Aid of Microsoft to know. Do I have to sign in just to use a basic desktop version of Microsoft? I don't know. Apparently you do. I, I don't know, folks. Enlighten me in the comments, and I will enlighten you on the beauties of using Linux and not having to sign into a cloud account to write an Office document, really. Uh, but down they get down here, and they write skip for now. And then you should see the welcome to the free Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And then the uh, click continue for free. Now there's, of course, they're upselling you the subscription. This is why I think they downloaded the Office 365 desktop version. Which were I, that must be the case. I don't know, um, but you can click the continue for free. It's ad supported, has limited features, and up to five gigabytes of cloud storage. Of course, the subscription gives you ad free and premium feature. Works on multiple platforms and devices, up to six terabytes. Oh, look at this! They give you a bunch more data. There you go, one terabyte per person. See plans and pricing, of course, to constantly be giving Microsoft money for the rest of your life. You pleb, live in our serfdom world here. So uh, you do have to have a OneDrive account. So I know some of you may or may not like the OneDrive account. Well, you got to have that. So you can save to OneDrive, which you can get a free tier of OneDrive. To be clear, you can get a free tier of that. and uh, Or you can, of course, once again, the upsell. I'm surprised that this button isn't five times bigger in bright, shining, flashing colors, to be honest. Totally surprised that the save to OneDrive is, is the, the easier button to see there. And now, now you can create your basic documents. You can save them into your OneDrive. So here are the features they say are missing in the ad-supported Microsoft Office here. Uh, dictate add-ins, line spacing, shading, and borders. You can't change your line spacing. How wonderful. Uh, cover page, tablets, shapes, icons, smart art, char uh, charts, online videos, bookmarks, cross-references, header, footer, Text box, quick parts, word art, signature line, date and time, object equation, symbols, columns, line numbers, hyphenation, word text, position, align, bring forward, backward, all draw and design tools, and all references and mailing tools. So effectively, it's Notepad that <laughs> you have to save to. Uh, you have to save to uh, your your OneDrive account, and then inside of Excel. We have add-ins, analyzing data, fill, conditional formatting, pivot tables, recommended pivot tables, all you know, all the other things, charts, smart arts, things like that, objects, themes, colors, fonts, breakdowns, data designs. I mean, all sorts of fun stuff. And then in PowerPoint, dictate add-ins, basically all those things that, that we're missing over there. So you can install it. Uh, you can use it. But you get massive side banner ads that make it look like something you've downloaded off the internet in 1995, and then uh, and then it will. I know 1995 things were pretty clean. Like let's say let's say the year 2000. You download some random app from the year 2000. You have banner ads all over it. There, that's what we're gonna get. And then you have to save it to their online system. Now this is an update. Now Microsoft actually responded to. PC World's version of the article, which is effectively a summary of the same thing uh, B-Bomb reported on. But the update from them, uh, I thought it was easier to spot. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's just go back over here. The update, they said, Microsoft has been conducting some limited testing. Currently, there are no plans to launch a free ad-supported version of Microsoft Office desktop apps. Which kind of makes sense because the way that they are presented here is pretty much hot garbage. I wouldn't want it anyway. I would be, give you a bad experience. Nobody would get the ad-supported version of Microsoft Office and go, "Wow, I want to sign in for this and pay money for it." You know. Uh, so I understand it's a limited test, but once again, they're trying to get us to tie ourselves into this market 
of utilizing their online cloud platform, their systems. They want you to think that office documents are the golden standard. In industry, to some degree, they could be. However, there are alternatives. I'm going to show you two here. Now, I am not a huge fan of only office, but if you are looking for what is effectively a uh, what looks a lot like it, it has the basic um, um, it has the basic uh, what is it? Um, uh, PowerPoints, Excel uh, spreadsheets and your um, word processor. This one is not a bad one, uh, as it does look, uh, it looks the, the part a little bit better. Now, I found in all my testing that it's not as well supported as other alternatives are, but it is simple, it is easy, it is cross-platform, and they also have the online features very easy and clean out of the box. And so only Office might be an, off, uh, an option you go with. It does your docx files by default. It's going to give you an experience very much like it. Now, as an author and as a writer, I found their, their review tools were very limiting. Now, I haven't done the research into them. I haven't looked at the editing tools for about about a year and a half now. year and a half ago, their editing and review tools were not as good. They don't have the easy ability to search for special characters, to do find and replace on special characters and things like that. But if you do want just a, a basic system that's a drop-in replacement for Microsoft Office, only Office might be your best choice. What I recommend and what I think is the gold standard is LibreOffice. Once again, cross-platform, you can download it for everything. Um, the the mobile apps are not as good. Only Office's mobile apps are better than, um, than the um, uh, mobile app for LibreOffice, which is more of just a reader than anything else. But... Um, the Osvar is using a desktop system. This is the entire suite, including drawing tools, math tools, databasing, all sorts of forms and functions and features inside of LibreOffice. And you can set it up and configure it to have a more modern ribbon type look. But the default is still the older school with toolbars. That's my personal preference. I can do everything inside of LibreOffice that I need to do, absolutely everything, including completely formatting my books to send them out professionally to be printed, is all done directly inside of LibreOffice. And uh, it is on the bleeding edge. It actually has more functions and features than Microsoft Office, although there are some deeply proprietary things that I like to say probably the upper maybe 0.1% of people there's something in LibreOffice that doesn't that that um, uh, Microsoft Office will do that LibreOffice won't, but the number of things is so minusculely small, it is absolutely uh, is absolutely uh, negligible in in every instance, and so I would recommend you have a look at LibreOffice if you're looking for an Office suite because you can run it on Windows just fine. You do not have to have accounts. It's not going to force you to do online stuff. Now, there are ways to run it as an online uh, system like um, you know, Office 365 can be online, although they are a little bit more complicated and a little bit more costly sometimes. So if you are looking for that online feature but you're not big into Microsoft, have a look at the only office. It's a little bit easier to do. But as far as uh, the core functions and features and everything you can do, I think LibreOffice is definitely the gold standard here. So I will leave you the linked video at the end of this video. We'll take you over to an introduction to LibreOffice in case you've not seen it before. So you can have a look at that as well. So with that, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below and let me know what you think about Microsoft silently experimenting on people to see if they would buy hot garbage <laughs> or use it for free at least. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.